Our bill is aimed at leveraging America's influence and conditioning our vote at any of the international financial institutions for Nicaragua until the leadership in that country takes significant steps to restore democratic order. I think that we would all agree as members of the United States uh, Congress that to have democracies in our region is beneficial and to have strong governance and strong rule of law and a strong independent judiciary. These are all values that we share and that we, the people throughout the hemisphere would like to have that in their countries as well. So let's go over just briefly what are some of the conditions uh, in this bill. And please, as I go through them, ask yourself, is that a damaging condition or is that something that would help the people? Not whether it helps the ruling class, the rich guys, the, the fat cat bankers, not whether it, it helps the regime or the government in power, whether it helps the people of those countries. So let, let me go through the list, Mr. Speaker. This bill has as conditions to promote democracy, promoting democracy, promoting an independent judicial system. Those are wonderful values. Promoting an independent electoral council so that the ruling party doesn't steal elections. Strengthen the rule of law so that you don't have corrupt judges deciding in favor of the rich guys and against the, the poor of the country. Fighting corruption, including investigating and persecuting government officials who are credibly alleged to be corrupt, who go against the people. What else does the bill do? do? Well, one of the conditions is that it protects the right of political opposition parties. Don't we want that? Political opposition parties, journalists who are trying to get the truth to the American, uh, to the uh, Nicaraguan people, just as they do here to the American people. Nicaragua continues to offer its uncondi unconditional support to Nicolas Maduro and his dictatorial regime in Venezuela. And according to congressional testimony, Venezuela's entity, PDVSA, has also used its subsidiary in Nicaragua, which is called Albanisa, and I'll give the, uh, the exact uh, um, letters of the, those names, to launder money. So, Mr. Speaker, if Venezuela's Maduro is using Nicaragua in order to evade U.S. sanctions, we need to take a closer look at these ties. We need to hold people accountable because all of that hurts the people of Venezuela and the people of Nicaragua. It hurts the government but it doesn't help the people. And that is what this bill does. We want to hold the Nicaraguan government accountable, just like we've done in other countries. As I said, in Central America, this is not something new out of whole cloth that we've invented. It has worked, and it has truly helped the people. Now, earlier this year, Mr. Sirius and I, we traveled to Honduras, we traveled to Guatemala, and we saw firsthand how conditioning our support for these countries works and has been extremely effective. Has it hurt those countries? It has not. It has worked. It has strengthened their democracy. It has strengthened the rule of law, the independent judiciary. So placing conditions incentivizes country to do the right thing. And it makes institutional reforms as needed to improve the livelihood of their citizens. So I know that the Nicaraguan government does not like this bill. But I tell you, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the people of Nicaragua would like to know that the United States Congress stands with them as they call for reforms that promote democracy, that strengthen the rule of law, that fight corruption, and that protects the right of all political opposition parties. And that's exactly what this bill does. 